Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this uh, is my review of Rain Like Hammers by Brandon, not Thomas, Graham, and that's uh, Luna dramatically sighing behind me because I'm waking her up. She was already awake, she's just being dramatic. Uh, so anyway, um, I was going to do another video on the Gina Carano thing, uh, but then uh, I... <laughs> It was just so awful. It was uh so basically I, I was doing I did a video yesterday and I was going through some tweet thread and I saw some really crazy stuff. And then I was like I took a mental note. I go, okay, so I remembered like about you know what time it was. I'll like I'll go back tomorrow and do a video. So I started searching her name and oh my gosh. This uh this harassment campaign against her is uh I, I've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely vile. So trying to find the the tweets from yesterday, I effectively made myself ill, like sick to my stomach. Uh, these people are just, they're just little demons. They're all freaking so awful. Oh. So then I just, I just took a little nap. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, I got this uh, comic. So uh, you might say, Brandon Graham, that sounds familiar. And it should, he's been a thing forever. Here's an article from Vice from 11 years ago. Uh, Brandon Graham is a comic book genius, but a retard in other respects. Remember when everyone used to talk like that? That's why I always, when they're like, oh, we searched through your tweets and we found a problematic joke from 11 years ago. Every joke from 11 years ago was problematic. That was the style of humor. This is how people talked on like, what do they call it? Family hour, dinner hour sitcoms. So anyway, he's this artsy dude with this artsy style, and um, I, I don't know, I, I would call him like kind of like an indie rock star of comics. Um, uh, he got controversial a couple years ago. He got canceled for basically uh, uh, talking some smack about Mags Visaggio and some other people in a little one-page uh, mini-comic, and then he was like low-grade me too which is basically he hit on some women at conventions over like 10 years. So then he, he went to go disappear and he kind of vaguely references this. Uh, I enjoyed this in a way. That being said, I kind of related it to me feeling physically ill from seeing kind of the psychic vileness of SJW specifically and their concerted effort to get Gina Carano to kill herself essentially um in that this was so intense that i found it too much uh this is as far as i can tell a mini series i think i saw some uh, article that said it was like a six issue mini series but um i can't handle this much vague on we <laughs> it was very very intense so i started at the end um like I was reading a freaking manga or something like that. And it was good because he has, well, first of all, he has this uh, back page um, advertisement for his stuff. And it's a good, it's a good kind of um, summary of his career. You know, he's got the the prophet redoing the Rob Liefeld uh, character, multiple warheads. Uh, I like he just gives these little King City, the cat is a weapon. Royal Boiler, oversized art book, sketchbook. Uh, Russian or multiple warheads. Russian werewolf epic um, and so uh, but then I was reading this he's got this uh, one page comic just kind of or, or two page comic process um, so he talks about these things called Ieshike it's a Japanese for healing a term used for manga created with the purpose of having a healing or soothing effect uh, he talks about it's all the kind of tactile life moments that are usually seen between the events that advance the plot in most comics. And then visually he kind of does two comic panels and then this is takes place, you know, just uh, seeing snowfall and uh, just minor instances in life. This is a really boring story <laughs> that I recently noticed. Um, and it's funny, I've had some very obese friends and we just talk about food and, and you, you know, you say, you know, you're going to die. They're like, yeah, of course I know I'm going to die. I'm going to die when I'm in my 50s. But... I get my greatest happiness in life, food, and I get it all day long, every day. He, I had a fat friend say, trust me, I've gotten a hundred years worth of happiness out of my 50 years on the planet. But one of the things I, I 
took me forever to notice is that part of the the um uh the joy of food is not just the smell and the taste but it's the texture especially if you have you know multiple different ingredients uh in there um so he's talking about things being tactile and that's how it's you know kind of like the the pressure going through your teeth to your gums and nerves when you're eating something and there's different you know consistencies uh in the bite um so then he basically starts talking about you know uh he says the comic you're holding is maybe a cousin of healing manga call it a processing comic i first started thinking of this story years ago and he just he just basically told, tells a story about being depressed but it's it's very um uh, kind of endearing. He says, I lived a very solitary life then. I watched a lot of military drama TV while eating takeout sushi in my dark little apartment. And then it says, murderer hero Jack Bauer. And then he brings up some uh, actress who is a crush of his. I found that very kind of endearing because I wouldn't think about this super artsy indie guy being into like military TV shows, but it's, it's, it's very, uh, human. And then I, I think everyone has their sad apartment phase of life. Um, and, uh, so he just, he says, uh, sometimes the ideas take some time before they make it to paper. I'm drawing this comic years after the beach, living in a different city and making my way through another rough patch. Time to process these new feelings with the ideas from the beach. Let's see where it goes. Okay. So, um, is anyone in Portland not depressed? I'm not trying to be mean, but send me an email if you live in Portland and you're not depressed. So it it's a, a vague future. I can't tell if it's Earth um, sci-fi and they have these giant moving cities. Yeah, I know there was a YA graphic novel made or YA novel made into a movie about that. Um, and this is it. It's just this guy who's probably supposed to be Brandon Graham because he's got an elephant tattoo and Brandon's got an elephant tattoo. Where's the picture? Right, right there. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, not living his best life, but he's kind of this drone on this giant, uh, workstation. And a lot of it is just his life, uh, specifically the, the tactile, you know, the pressing of buttons, the, the routine of, uh, of food and TV and banter. And he's got a little work crush, uh, lives in this giant kind of, uh, sad, empty place. Um, and, uh, you know, Boy, if you grew up reading like the, uh, you know, American superhero comics, it's probably a really hard sell to say that I consider, you know, yeah, I do consider him to be an artistic uh, genius, not just in art, but in writing. But uh, I, I also understand if you just your brain just completely rejects this. Um, so it has this kind of lulling quality. Uh, like I said, it feels very honest and true. Uh, it's very sincere and it's a bit too intense for me. I've gone through periods like of, of this. I think at least most creative people have. Uh, I would assume most normies have uh, something like this as well. But uh, it was just a little bit too <laughs> too intense. Uh, so it was interesting in an aspect, although every time they kind of talked about what I'm assuming is going to be the plot, I was like, that's fine. To me, it was just kind of more interesting. Just there's this bit where um, he goes out on the uh, the deck, and he sees yeah, there's just people going to the bathroom, uh, and he sees this uh, uh, dead scavenger out in the uh, sand, and it's just uh, I don't know. It's, it's I liked it. I liked it, but I can't take it. <laughs> so that's about all I'll show. It's um, you know it's owned by him. I don't get, want to get a copyright strike. I don't. He doesn't seem like the type to give a copyright strike but you know what i mean i don't want to give away the entire comic i do kind of want to show that page with the uh scavenger because it kind of you know it gives a hint of you know what when this really gets into the plot what it might uh be like but uh, you know i found it too intense um uh, i kind of got it but uh i wanted it to be uh, over with i think it's i think that page is right here yeah, so he goes out on the deck and he sees this, you know, funky uh, scavenger far from his garden cavern home, decaying in dust. His bulb brain surge protected. With its case still sealed, it could tick on for years. And then it says, burns from the farmer's defense. But it's a fence. So he, he, he does like nice little bits of sci-fi world building. 
Um, but the most interesting thing is the emotional intensity. <laughs> uh, so he talks about kind of like senses, tactile things. Um, but then it actually ends up kind of revealing emotional kind of psychic things. So just as the watching the vileness of SJWs trying to get a woman to kill herself um, using Twitter, these dramatic sighs from me. I'm sorry. It'll be quiet in a second. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I mean, just the life. She's sleeping on a human bed with her head on a human pillow. Not made of humans, but made for humans. She's fed. She's in air-conditioned comfort all the time. Such a rough life. Uh, so anyway, uh, is it a recommend? I mean, it's 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 very. I mean, it's a work of genius. But uh, this was just uh, too much for me. Too much. Too intense. Uh, which you might find a little odd, since it's about this roly-poly guy just kind of like silently walking down empty hallways. But uh, emotionally. It's uh, very intense. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.